Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokona Man at YouTube with another model build and review. Today we're going to be looking at the 1980-1981 1 to 1.44 scale Gelgoog made by Bandai. Now this is not the original pressing from the 1980s but a anniversary model that was later released for the 15th, 20th and uh, every five year anniversary so this one would have probably been about five to seven years ago from uh, where I've uh, sourced it and knowing uh, the supply chains and uh, whatnot of incoming stock. What is very cool is this product is a throwback to what modeling was like in the 80s utilizing the same uh, runner tooling box art the instructions still recommend to paint before you assemble and you get the same articulation joints and whatnot even though there's technology to improve upon uh, back then a lot of the master models uh, due to the strange uh, proportions and look were hand sculpted and the uh, molding and tooling was uh, hand milled for injection molding so you can see in the inside of the parts is all sorts of uh, scratching and uh, tool work from uh, the manual work uh, performed polishing cutting all that sort of uh, jazz the model comes with basic black and white instructions would have been uh, very neatly hand drawn as well as original artwork of examples of it being finished two runners no poly caps no stickers nothing extra Parts come uh, in a little uh, bag, and uh, having some original 1980 um, ones, the plastic does have a slight uh, texture and age uh, feel to it. I've done a vintage build for a while, though the formula is exactly the same as the previous ones. Because there's no poly caps, parts overlap each other for points of articulation. Uh, this will be demonstrated step by step in the pictures in this video that I've uh, taken while working on it. You would assemble something like the head or the lower arm first, super glue it, putty it, wait a day, sand it back and polish it nicely and then you add the next layer of articulation limb or movement so it can swivel or move backwards and forwards. Uh, this can be very tedious and time consuming but it's many smaller jobs uh, done to finish a large job over a longer period of time. So it's good to have a couple of these on the go at any given time. I've implemented some new ideas and steps to prevent issues that I've had in the past. With the major um, elements of the torso, these are not snap kits, so you don't really have uh, pegs or guides to have the piece come together. In the inside of the chest, I glued little bits of uh, styrene sheets, tabs, to allow the two parts to guide in easily so we've got the articulation of the arms moving fluidly and smoothly and for the legs because everything fits universally I wrote down what was the right and what was the left so the correct two halves of the legs and feet were glued together we didn't have one fat club foot and uh, one skinny leg what I've also noticed uh, with a stolen Gundam marker that I picked up from some uh, workshop God knows when and God knows who previously owned it I don't really like it as a finishing product in uh, painting or colouring in components though what I did find it to be extremely useful in after I've uh, puttied, filled, sanded back all the parts and applied a layer of uh, primer while doing close-up inspection of each part and I saw any sink marks, open seams or faults, I would uh, circle it with the Gundam marker to address at a later point or immediately. This also allowed me to write little uh, notes and points where I wish to modify or address at a later date without a second or a third inspection. Uh, this has been carried on to other projects. This new method has become a staple in my hobby, especially for very long-term projects or projects put away for a fair amount of time. Uh, this one was shelved a few times and uh, started uh, around the August-September period. Once I've done the primer and I've noticed there's little imperfections, instead of utilising a harsh putty and going into the harder uh, sanding um, layers first, I decided to use 
Mr. Dissolved uh, Putty and utilize that as a follow-up putty. Now I intend this to be a high gloss, uh, super polished wet look gloss finish. So there was uh, extra attempts to make sure not a single dent or fault was uh, left behind and uh, forced me to do about two to three follow-up sessions in filling up uh, imperfections. Mr. Dissolve Putty was ideal in being uh, very soft and easy to remove, but only high grit sandpapers worked out and not uh, ripping out and removing the whole amount of putty immediately. It's also suggested to allow it to mature and harden as fully as possible to uh, not reopen or re-agitate their fault which I've done one or two times. The primer used was Tamiya lacquer through an airbrush. Very easy to use once the airbrush is well maintained especially if it's a wider needle and nozzle and uh, externally mixed before adding into the cup. Once we have the final layer of uh, primer uh, things are a bit uh, bumpy, a bit gritty, a bit rough so we polished this uh, from 1000, 2000, 3000, 5000, 7000 grit sandpaper wet very lightly as to not uh, lift the primer or at least make it look a bit transparent into uh, plastic and this gave us a nice ideal polished smooth surface to lay down some uh, lacquer. The lacquers we utilised were uh, Mr. Color, SMS, Gaia Notes, uh, that sort of thing and we would uh, put it in in a colour uh, modulation manner where it's uh, quite dark and stylized at the bottom and built up and become lighter at the um, higher uh, elements of the kit. Interesting thing of these uh, older kits, uh, they lack a lot of detail, there's a lot of free open space that can be used as a canvas through masking or uh, decals or all sorts of scheme, chipping, weathering. So a lot of the older kits, uh, especially the MSV, had uh, wild uh, colour schemes and a lot of attention on giant decals and uh, silver uh, paint chipping. As I've got a large canvas to uh, work with, I decided to go into more very heavy shading and using uh, multiple colours or shades onto the single piece. As uh, the Gelgoog out of box, looking at the uh, box art, does have a couple of colours of uh, your uh, green, grey and uh, black. Uh, masking was uh, required and for each uh, surface or panel of colour you do have a couple of colours being shaded. This would require a session of uh, painting or laying down those colours, putting it clear, allowing it a couple of days to dry, then masking. Just like the building and seam line filling um, elements of the video and the build, the painting sessions were pretty much the same that um, a colour was laid down, an area was masked and then you would paint the next area due to lack of uh, colour separation. And even if there were some you would still rather to glue it together as post paint gluing would be far more um, difficult in filling that seam then uh, just start uh, masking ahead of time. A little bit of shading was done around uh, vents and uh, whatnot. I did not do any hand painting except for the visor. A little gem was glued in. Some five second fix uh, liquid clear resin was uh, put into the eyepiece and hardened. A few layers of uh, gloss coat were applied. Once uh, completely dry, that was polished back with three, four, five seven thousand grit sandpaper and another few coats of clear until uh, every little pit a uh, particle of dust or a tad of uh, roughness or pooling was um, absolutely uh, removed and we had a very deep shiny sheen that did not pick up uh, any of the faults nubs uh, sink marks or seams that the build process left behind. If it was a matte coat we wouldn't have to be as uh, careful as we were. You don't see a lot of very high room sheen or metallic vintage kits as due to the fitting being slightly off and uh, due to the amount of uh, seams they would stand out quite significantly and take away from the attention of the build. Though going for a gloss finish and no faults are being found, it does look a bit on the bland side. But the beautiful appeal of this build is to the uninitiated, it's a very awkward, very old, very poor proportionately uh, kit that looks uh, competently uh, painted, though to others who are more involved, more passionate, more enjoy vintage builds can enjoy it for uh, what it is 
and uh, the level and the tension of work that has uh, gone into uh, this particular piece. I did enjoy building it this much as uh, one of my favourite mobile suit designs is the Gelgig. The vintage look is really, really uh, obscure and unique. It's uh, nothing like any of the uh, other renditions. And uh, just having something like this in my collection, in my catalogue, was a lot of fun to do. And um, it hasn't really killed my joy in uh, vintage builds. And I do plan on uh, having one or two more builds uh, in this year. Ideally, I'm very, very happy with the finish, how it came out. It probably is my best vintage build uh, to date. And uh, the amount of time put into it, it uh, does have uh, the most minimal amount of uh, flaws. Uh, there is some, some elements to the uh, natural uh, weathering and definition, edging work and whatnot, uh, the washes and detailing. I could have improved on ever so slightly, but that will go with uh, time and doing another uh, vintage build or two and improving upon that. If you find this very fascinating, I definitely highly recommend tracking down one of these kits and building it. They're very easy to find, uh, come across and buy, especially online stores. A lot of smaller and uh, hobby stores away from Asia or uh, Japan are a bit worried about stocking them as they might uh, not sell. So you might have to go more online than uh, localized. Thank you very much for watching as always. Until next time, stay tuned for further content. We post videos at least weekly. Have a look at the description section for sources and links. Have a look at uh, the Facebook page for a few times a week updates and interesting uh, sources and techniques and tutorials and other bits and pieces. Uh, finally, have a look at uh, the playlist on the YouTube channel especially under kit reviews. We've done a few vintage kits in the past and uh, some of them might be of interest to you. Catch you guys next time and see you later.